God be in my life. No matter what come my way, whom shall I fear? Victors may come my way, but whom shall I fear? My enemy may try to come up against me like, like a flood, but whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. God be the glory. At this time, we will have our morning scripture, which we'll be lifting from the preacher, Ecclesiastes, uh, verse chapter 9, Old Testament reading, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, Hebrews, chapter 12. Ecclesiastes, Old Testament, New Testament, Hebrews. This morning I will be lifting these words from the New Living Translation. Now that you have arrived there, Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, if you will look at verse 11. As I said, I'll be reading this from the New Living Translation. We read this at your leisure that you may get a better understanding of what the preacher is basically telling us. It reads, I have observed some things else under the sun. The fastest runner does not always win the race. And the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry. And the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. It is all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. Hebrews 12 will be. Look at the very first. Which reads, therefore, someone say therefore. Therefore. Since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slow us down, especially the sin that so easily trip us up. Let us run with endurance. The race that God has set before us. Amen. That concludes the reading of Ecclesiastes in Hebrews. At this time, I'm going to ask Deacon Aiken, if you will, come and lead us to the throne of grace. Let everyone pray for him and with him. Realizing 
that it was nothing that we done so good uh, or so great, yes, yes. but because of your grace oh, and your mercy, yes. yeah. you allowed us to continue to live on yes. just for this day. Yes. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for watching over us and keeping us yes. down through the years, Lord, and yes. all that we've been through, Lord. When we was talked about and knocked aside, and Lord, even knocked down yeah. by things that were said, but through your word of God, you lift us up. Yeah. Yeah. And here we are today. Yeah. God, we thank you. Thank you through all of the sickness, still, Lord, yeah. that has come our way. Yeah. Lord, now through the years, Lord, that Today we are here for homecoming. Yes. Celebrating 120 years. Yes. Lord, Lord, realize that it was all because of you. Yes, yes, yes. We honor you this morning, Lord, for being the God that you are. Yes. A true and living God. Jesus. Lord, God, continue to bless the shepherd of this house, Lord.
many of you here today know that God can't lie? Now he said, if you lean on him, he won't let you fall. Then that's exactly what he'll do. He'll prop you up. homecoming worship service here at Mount Olive Free Will Baptist Church. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Dr. John E. McDowell, Sr., the annual bishop of Cape Fear Conference 8, First Lady Patricia McDowell, Assistant Pastor Letty Bryant, Elder Kevin Bryant, Minister LaWanda Leggett, mothers, deacons, and other church officials, we all extend a heartfelt welcome to each of you. I hope that each of you will be inspired and encouraged during and by this homecoming worship service. I leave each of you with this message, a true spirit lifter. Lose your tension. Tension is one of the worst of all depressants of the spirit. A high tempo pattern of thinking and living draws off energy, leaving the spirit exhausted and dull. Therefore, the mind needs to experience a depth of quietness in which tension will subside. One of the most effective passages in producing such a state of mind is this statement, Be still and know that I am God, Psalm 46 and 10. In these words is the most effective technique of relaxation. Be still, that is, reduce your activity. Stop your headlong rush. Slow down. Do not walk or talk so fast. In fact, do not walk or talk at all. <laughs> Sit still. Be silent. Let composure come over you. You are agitated and therefore momentarily incapable of those creative and basic thoughts that can rearrange your activity. Having obtained an attitude of stillness, you will find the greatest of all thoughts will then come into your mind. You are then ready to know that God is God. That is, you realize that you cannot do everything, that the world does not rest on your shoulders. The simple truth that you are to do your best and leave the rest to God yes. comes back to your consciousness. Out of such self-treatment, your spirit will be lifted. Be still and know that God is God. Welcome. <laughs> Deaths in the 
that this, this week. But the Lord, he, he's going to sustain us. He's going to take us yes, through. Yes, the Lord, yes. through it all, the Lord has been good to us. And he yes. brought us a mighty, mighty yes. long yes. way. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we uh, thank God for, for the welcome. This time we're going to ask that uh, Minister Lawanda Leggett come and bring us out the history of Baptist Church dates back to more than 100 years. Her founders are unknown by name, but are as far back as slavery days or immediately following during the post-Civil War days. There is no documentation of this data. Much of the information was passed on to later generations by word of mouth. The earliest site of the church was located in the Kyle's Field Cemetery area, a part of the church site in the Wade community. This location was a remote area on the banks of the Cape Fear River. There, its earliest members gathered to sing and pray, a forbidden practice of that period for blacks. There was no structure for the earlier church. Instead, laws were placed in groups, and people gathered around to sing and pray and give thanks to the Lord. As the members progressed economically, a building was erected. They built it with their own hands together. In 1899, the pioneer board members of Mount Olive Church, David Fuller, John, McDow John McDonald, G.A. G. Cameron, Isom Hodge, Hodge, and Samuel Haywood purchased a new church site on River Road from Alexander and Julia McAllister. A new building was erected in 1904 at the present location. This building still stands with some modifications. The succeeding pastors are listed in the order in which they served as known. Reverend N.A. Harrington, Reverend C.D. Smith, Reverend Dan McMillan, Reverend Saunders, Reverend Williams, Reverend G.L. Gillespie, Bishop M.N. McLean, and present day Bishop J.E. McDowell Sr. Bishop McLean served as pastor from 1954 until his death in October of 1995. Committed to the call of God in his life, Bishop McLean was a visionary. Under his leadership, the church began plans to install a baptismal pool, expand the cafeteria, and build an educational wing. Bishop McLean did not live to see the completion of this dream. However, through God's faithfulness and under the leadership of our current pastor, Elder John E. McDowell Sr., new additions to the church have been completed. Mount Olive Free Will Baptist Church, phase two. Elder McDowell began his pastoralship at Mount Olive in 1995. Elders Letty Bryant serves as assistant pastor. As anointed vessels of God, the two unselfishly serve the body of Christ and the community. The first homecoming was celebrated September 13th and 14th 1986. At that time, Sister Josephine Stedman was the oldest member of the church. Mother Rena McDonald was the oldest mother of the church. Deacon William McLaurin was the oldest deacon in the church. The church purchased an additional acre of land and adopted a street to keep clean. The baptismal pool has been installed. The cafeteria has been expanded and the educational wing constructed. Past and present motherboard, Mother Rena McDonald, Mother Pearl McDonald, Mother Joyce Herring, Mother Pearl Getty, Mother Pearlie Patterson, Mother Josephine Aikens, Mother Zetta McKeithen, Mother Louise McLean. Past and present deacon board, Deacon William McLaurin, Deacon Huell Aikens, Deacon Leon Burnett, Deacon Henry C. Getty, Deacon Isaac T. Allen, Deacon Raymond Lindsay. Mount Olive Free Will Baptist Church has been a landmark of the community. It stands as a monument to the work of God and a testament to Christian living among its forebearers and to generations following. Its members have gone forth to build two churches, Bethlehem Free Will Baptist Church and Sandy Grove Free Will Baptist Church. 
These churches carry on the work of the mother church in the same tradition. They are a tribute to the progressiveness of Mount Olive. God has richly blessed her generations and continues to do so even this day. Thank you. Certainly we thank Minister Lady for bringing us the history of, of this church and, and do understand if there was a name that was not called, please let us know that we may insert that name as it's stated, it goes a long way back. And, and there's a lot of things that has not, but not passed on. And there's a lot of things that even today that we just do not know, but nevertheless, to the best of our knowledge, you heard the history of, of this church. At this time, we, we have with us uh, to bring us a solo of Sister Sally uh, McFadden. She will debate Sadie with that back.
humble when you own the need. I've tried it. Time we're going to do, we're going to ask the scribe to bring us another commodity selection, and after they bring us.
tell you what Jesus said. Now, I wonder if it's all right if I could tell you what Jesus said. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. It's something I say, oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Yes. Certainly we do on the spirit, Lord. We thank God for, for the way that He has taken this service thus far in His hands and, and He has shaped it and molded it until what He wanted to be. And, and the Lord can't do anything wrong. So, whether you receive it or not, this atmosphere is conducive to healing and deliverance and miracles on this day. Amen. All you got to do is just let go and let God. Amen. Hallelujah. We do honor the Spirit of the Lord. We do honor. always win the race. And the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry and the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. It is all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. Yes. How many of you know that you need to be in the right place yes. at the right time? Yes. I stopped by today to tell you you are in the right place at the right time. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trip us up. Yes. Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. My brothers and sisters, this morning with the Lord's help, I'd like to preach this thought mind as I reflect on to the chosen theme for this homecoming. Celebrating decades of God's grace and good favor. Celebrating decades of God's grace and favor. My brothers and sisters, grace is God's blessing to people even though they are unworthy. Mm -hmm. While favor is a tangible sign that someone has the Lord's approval. Yes. Grace 
race is a powerful concept that is woven into the fabrics of the Bible, showcasing God's abundant love and mercy toward mankind. Throughout the scripture, we see numerous examples of grace that highlights God and merit favor and his desire to extend forgiveness, redemption, and blessing to his people. How many of you know that you are his people? Yeah. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, there are stories of grace in the Bible that are prevalent, revealing God's unchanging character and his willingness to extend grace to both the ordinary and extraordinary moments of life. The concept of grace in the Bible transcends mere likeness of a part. It embodies God's boundless love and mercy that's standing his creation even to those that's undeserved. Look at someone who says, I'm glad his love and mercy reached me. I'm glad his love and mercy reached me. Grace is not mercy, not earned or merited. It is a, a gift freely given, reflecting God's benevolent nature. It is an unmerited favor that is often highlighted in various Bible stories showcasing God's willingness to forgive and embrace those who come to him with a contrary heart. Through grace, individuals are redeemed and their transgressions forgiving enable them to forge and renew relationship with the Almighty. It is through grace you have been saved, offered a path to salvation and to eternal life. Grace doesn't merely save, it transforms, it lives, it instills a sense of purpose, hope, and spiritual enlightenment among those that believe in Jesus Christ. It's a catalyst change that guiding people like you and I toward the righteous living of spiritual fulfillment. And how many of you know that if you serve God, there's something in, in God's favor and in his, in his grace that, that makes us feel full and complete no matter what we are going through. Yes. You will find in Genesis 6 and 8 where Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord at the time when the earth was full with wickedness. Yeah. Yeah. This unmerited favor was not a result of Noah's inheritance, righteousness, but the, new, but the testament of God's favor disposition. You will find in Genesis 50, 19 to 21, where Joseph's life was, was, was basically turned upside down by, by his brother, but, but we find that grace and forgiveness evidently was given to him when he chose to forgive his brother and did not retaliate on them because he was put into slavery. All right. Instead, Joseph extended grace, providing it for and protecting them during the time of famine. You'll find in Ruth 2 and 10 uh, where Ruth, uh, a Moabite, uh, experienced God's grace when she decided to support her mother-in-law, uh, Naomi, despite her, her foreign status. Ruth was accepted and protected while gleaning in the field of Boaz, who eventually became her husband. Ruth's story is a powerful narration of grace extending beyond ethics and, and, and cultural boundaries embodying God's inclusive love for all people. Yes. You'll find in 2 Samuel 7 and 15 where David, despite his flaws and sins, was the recipient of God's grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. The Lord covenant with David promised that his vengeance would endure and basically culminate in the birth of Jesus Christ. This covenant is the vision of hope, highlighting God's forgiveness and the redemption of power for, of grace and the transcendence to all generations, even to this generation today. Yes. Grace is, it is a pure form and unmerited favor granted to humanity, yes. irrespective of the worthiness of Merit. None of us deserve it. 
but God extended it to us anyway. So today, my brothers and sisters, if we reflect back on this Mount Olive Free Will Baptist Church, from our forefathers up to this present day, the story on how they persevered and endured trials and tribulations, we know that it had to be the grace and favor of God. Amen. Scripture tells us that the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but time and chance happen to us all. A phrase adopted from the book of Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, ninth verse, where the author complained frequently in the book about the changes of the hard times of life. Yes. The entire passage reads the thing that has been seen and, and it that which it shall be and that which is done which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Yes. My brothers and sisters, no matter what we've been through through life, yes. know that there's nothing that's happened to you that haven't happened sometime before. Yes. Sometimes we allow ourselves to get caught up in our own individualities. Yes. And we feel like just because we are going through that nobody has been through it but you. Yes. In other words, there's something happening now yes. that has not happened, that has happened even decades before we even arrived. Yes. Economic, political power, move, sickness, hunger, and even breakout of the damage yes. as they happened back in the day. A situation don't look good, didn't look good back then. And we see that in some cases it don't look good right now. Yes. Am I right about it? Yes. Some of you are going through some things right now. And it seems like because you can't come out of it, can't get through it. Yes. It don't look too good for you yes. right now. Yes. But I stop by the day to let you know yes. that God, he can do anything. Yes. And he can bring you out of anything yes. you are in. But we can't stop yes. celebrating now the grace and favor of our Lord. Yeah. No matter what you're going through, yes. you got to learn how to praise your way in it yeah. and praise your way through it yeah. and praise your way out of it. Yeah. So this journey go takes us back up, down memory lane. Yeah. As I think about uh, the forefather that came before us uh, and you allow your mind to go back down memory lanes too, uh, we'll find our minds uh, getting stuck in some period of life. Uh, yeah. But I stop by and let you know uh, that God is still God. Uh, yeah. He has not changed. Uh, yeah. uh, everything that's happening now uh, yeah. has already been laid out. Uh, and you are predestined. Uh, you are part of his divine plan. Uh, yeah. And you're here for a purpose today. Uh, and I stop by and let you know uh, that God did not take this church uh, 120 years uh, yeah. just to leave it now. Uh, sure. It's not done yet. Uh, yeah. The Bible has declared uh, that there are now witnesses uh, a race of running now. Uh, yeah. And he wants us to know uh, that there's some right now uh, yeah. a cloud of witnesses. Uh, yes. No matter where we can see them or not, uh, yeah. they're sitting around uh, yeah. and they're looking down on us right yeah. now. Uh, you need to understand uh, yeah. my brothers and sisters yeah. Despite everything uh, that's going on around us, uh, with God's grace uh, and his mercy uh, and his faith uh, at our back, uh, we can't stop now. Uh, it's not a good time to quit. Uh, we got to keep offering up. Uh, pray to our God. Uh, we got to keep celebrating him. Uh, what we find in Luke. Uh, John, I mean, uh, we find that John 20, uh, uh -huh. uh, chapter 20, uh, around the 19th verse, uh, yeah. after Jesus appeared uh, behind closed doors uh, uh -huh. and windows, uh, 
We don't know what happened. Uh, yeah. All we know uh, that he appeared uh, uh -huh. behind the doors uh, uh -huh. and they were closed uh, and they looked around uh, and they saw Jesus uh, yeah. he showed in there. Uh, they said uh, yeah. they were amazed uh, and overjoyed uh, because they saw Jesus uh, because they didn't think uh, he would be back uh, like he said. Uh, and he said to the disciples, uh, was overjoyed. Peace be with you. Jesus declared a mission for his father. He said, the father sent me, so I am sending you. These are the words that have called to our forefathers down through the years. And the father has sent me. I'm sending you. Well, my brothers and sisters, uh, the story uh, of the church uh, is a story uh, of a people uh, been sent uh, into the world uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, the Christ, uh, with his peace uh, and power uh, by the Holy Spirit uh, over 120 years ago uh, while standing around uh, some laws. Uh, Singing, uh, praying, uh, and giving God uh, all types uh, of harmony. Uh, well, uh, to see my brothers and sisters uh, right behind uh, this building, uh, we are here uh, in the day. Uh, just a few thousand, uh, a few hundred feet uh, back there uh, on the Cape Fair River, uh, the first pastor. Uh, of this church, uh, he was sent uh, by God uh, to embark uh, on a journey uh, into an uncharted, uh, a faith, uh, and an uncharted, uh, a dream. Uh, receiving the gospel band uh, was the hand uh, of God uh, as he began to rape back then, uh, 120 years uh, ago. Uh, the race uh, began uh, according uh, to the church history uh, as known today, uh, 120 uh, years ago. Uh, God, uh, my God, uh, the Tom uh, in the hands uh, of the late uh, in uh, or in a uh, Harrison uh, in the hands uh, in the hands uh, of the Reverend. And then from his hand uh, to the Reverend uh, Dan McMillan, uh, although uh, the weary years uh, and the salad tears, uh, they still celebrated uh, and all that God uh, had done. Uh, these vessels, uh, these vessels, uh, their lamps uh, began to run uh, and get dim. Uh, Get there, uh, we are knowing, uh, so it's 
till then We can't Don't get weary And though
the present breeze, uh, the race marks uh, out to us and suggest uh, that this life uh, as a Christian, uh, this Christian uh, is not, uh, is not uh, a short sprint, uh, it's a marathon, uh, you would have to run, uh, you would have to run uh, to see what uh, the end uh, gonna be. Uh,
that strengthen me. Yeah. Say, I can do all things in Christ Jesus that strengthen me. And see, that's just the way the adversary heard you say it. You got to say it with authority. You got to say, I can do all things in Christ Jesus that strengthen me. When you say it, the devil got to tremble when you say it. When you speak the word of God, you got to speak it boldly enough to make the devil tremble. Because if you don't, he'll stand there and look you in the face. Don't let your current situation dictate your praise. God sees your pain. He senses your anger. God he sees the tears that flows, not from your eyes, but he sees the tears that flow from your heart. Yeah. Yeah. First Corinthians 10 and 13 in the Living Translation tells us, remember that the temptation that comes into our life are no different than any other experience. Wow. In other words, you're not the only one going through. <laughs> so you need to just keep celebrating God when you yeah. 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 It's too much, woe is me. Yeah. But it's not woe is me. It's woe is us. And God faithfulness, he will keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you can't stand up against it. Because greater is you he that's in you than he that's in the world. Yeah. I'm glad can't nobody do you like a child. Aren't you glad that all things work together for them that love the Lord? Aren't you glad that we can man do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning? Aren't you glad that trouble don't last always? Aren't you glad that the bright side? Aren't you glad that he was friends? Aren't you glad that he's a mad regulator when it seems like you're about to lose your mind? I wonder if there's anybody in here, anybody in here that has reached the unreachable. I wonder if there's anybody in here that has carried a heaven a load. Yes. Yes. Find out that it won't really as heavy as he thought. I wonder if anybody ever succeeded on a mission. The writers encouraged us this morning to endure until the end by celebrating God's grace and his favor. Sometimes when trials and tribulations come up, we sometimes find ourselves ready to give up. But if you look to Jesus, who kept running, bad the cross, he kept running, they whipped him 39 times. He kept running. That prison was inside of him. He kept running. And he laid him in a tomb and, and he still kept running. And early on Sunday morning, he got up. If I was a singer today, I'm not so I would declare the lyrics of the artist, uh -huh. William Murphy. Yeah. When he said, This is my season for grace and mercy. This is my season for grace. What I have sung. This is my season for grace and mercy. This is my season to reap what I have sung. You see, I haven't been perfect, but through this grace, I show them faith. You see, God got a, a person, yes, and I know that He's able. I got a season around, and I, and I know He's. And there's no more stressing. I got feeling around I know. I can show this is my season. For grace and faith. 
This is my season yes. to reap what I have sown. And I want you to know that God, He's leaning yes. in my
But while you were calling to others, Lord, you did not have sound. But Lord, you came in today and you took up residence here on this day. And Lord, because you stayed here for a little while, I, I, I declare and decree, Lord, that the healing and miracles are taking place right now. We may not be able to see it right now. Lord, you know what? They just believe on your word, Lord. We know that a change shall come. And Father, we thank you right now. We plead the blood of Jesus against the power of the burning power of the Holy Spirit. Anything that might try to take their mind and make them think that they can't be healed, they can't be delivered on this day. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, we stand right now. Lord, bless every home that's represented here today. Lord, bless They're going out, they're coming in, they're rising up and they're sitting down. And Father, we thank you. Father, we ask you to bless every pastor here sitting there, every minister, or every king, every mother. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you give us the praying power, Lord, that they might speak healing and living and give you the courage to the world. That Jesus Christ is so come. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all you do. We ask you, Lord, for allowing this Mount Olive Church, Lord, to celebrate 120 years of celebrating your, your grace and your faith. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all the sins that you remember those that are sick and afflicted. We ask you, Lord, to remember those that's bereaved in our church today. And not only our church family, Lord, but others, Lord. Father, you know who they are. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to, to send your shepherd of glory to allow your angelic host to go and minister to them right now that they might realize that death is not the end. Father, we thank you. Father, thank you, Lord, for all you do. Father, today, Lord, we ask you to continue, Lord, to breathe on. Us as we celebrate yeah, this yeah. 120 years of home. Father, we thank you. Your son Jesus Christ, one bled and died, and got up early on Sunday morning with all power in his hand. 